system itself that tells the immune system to chill out, to calm down. It's kind of like the hippie in the room. It's like, whoa, chill out, man, it's cool. So what happens is the immune system, when you don't have enough vitamin D and it's exposed to something that it doesn't like, it'll go all out. Let's kill it with fire. But the vitamin D helps to promote the type of cell that tells the immune system to chill out so that you don't wind up with autoimmune diseases. So actually, vitamin D deficiency. And at this latitude, most people are running around vitamin D deficient. Because between the end of October and the beginning of April, the position of the sun on the horizon prevents most ultraviolet light from coming in. And also, most people are bundled up you know, with coats and hats and scarves, so they're not having any skin exposed to the sun. So they're really not making very much vitamin D. You get a little bit from your diet, but mostly vitamin D needs to be supplemented um, throughout the year. Yes? It's okay to take the vitamin D3 without the calcium? Yes. Yes. Um, and so deficiency of vitamin D, because it's involved with, this, with the immune system like this, it's implicated in a number of different Almost every kind of cancer is in some way implicated, in some way implicates vitamin D deficiency. Um, most autoimmune diseases are in some way implicate vitamin D deficiency, especially multiple sclerosis. What we find is that when you get close to the equator, things like multiple sclerosis, um, what else? Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is a thyroid disease. Um, even most forms of autism are almost unknown when you get close to the equator because people there are constantly getting adequate vitamin D from sunlight. Um, vitamin D is involved with a tremendous number of biochemical functions. Yes? A question. Uh, if you take a multiple vitamin like uh, Central, uh -huh. uh, it has vitamin D in it. Yes. Uh, what, what is the amount that you should have? In other words, should you have additional vitamin D? So, well, uh, Centrum is, uh, I'm not, I don't want to bad mouth any particular product, so the Centrum is particularly egregious, um, because it's, it's got forms of things, as you'll see, <coughs> that are particularly not absorbable. Um, but uh, most multivitamins do not have an adequate amount of vitamin D in them. Uh, they're, they're, they are almost always in the correct form, but multivitamins are a problem in some sense, and that a lot of vitamins compete with each other to be absorbed. So if you take everything all at once, most of it's just you're making very expensive urine. You know, most of it's being lost um, because a lot of the, the components of the multivitamin are competing with each other to be absorbed. A lot of things need to be taken. Some things at one part of the day, some things at the other part of the day to maximize the usefulness. Um, hypervitaminosis D, so vitamin, uh, vitamin D toxicity, it's almost unheard of. It almost never happens. As far as I know, there's only been two or three confirmed cases, and all of them are the result of somebody taking over a million units a day, a month. Um, the, the, the dose that's most commonly encountered is 1,000 units a day. The RDA, the recommended daily allowance, which is, I should have defined recommended daily allowance. The FDA, Food and Drug Administration, defines the recommended daily allowance as the amount of the substance that you need to take in order to not die from the deficiency of that, of that substance. Yes. So there's a big, very big difference sometimes between the RDA and the optimal intake. What I should tell you about vitamin D is that if you go to the beach on a sunny day in a swimsuit, you will make about 10,000 units of vitamin D just from your skin from the sunlight in about an hour. But the RDA is 400. Oh. What does that tell you? The, um, so it's known as the sunshine vitamin. So as I said, you make about 10 to 15,000 units from your skin. Yes? So I happen to know that my vitamin D level is very low. Mm -hmm. And I take it huge doses of it um, with prescriptions, without prescriptions. I take it every day now. But it's only budging very slowly. You know, it didn't shoot up. I expected it to you know, shoot up to a normal range in a couple of weeks. And in a couple of years, it hasn't happened. Well, it depends on a number of things. Um, let me go to the next slide.
slide, as you'll see, uh, there was a big study that was just done in which they found that the dose of vitamin D from over-the-counter supplements that you can just go into CVS or Walgreens and buy was unpredictable. They surveyed them and they found that in some cases they were up to 99.76% wrong from the listed dose. So you think you're taking a thousand units a day, you're actually getting like three, maybe four. Sometimes they're very, very wrong. So the problem is knowing which brands actually have the dose that they say they have. Um, what we recommend is that if you're taking the vitamin D for a specific condition, or if you know your vitamin D is low from blood work, it's best to take what's, a, what's called a professional line supplement, something like, um, and we, we, we offer a number of these in our office. There's some, there's some other places to get them in the area. Um, but these, the, the professional line supplements are assay for concentration to make sure that they are exactly what you think you're getting. The other thing is that the fat-soluble vitamins, they don't get absorbed unless you take them with a fat. Olive oil or fish oil or a diet or a, a meal that has some fat in it. Otherwise, the vitamin D doesn't get absorbed at all. It just goes right out into your solid waste. Um, next slide. Um, okay, vitamin E. Vitamin E is known as um, tocopherol. Um, the most common form is DLL tocopherol. Uh, and the problem is that the D form, the D vitamin, remember that term, vitamin? The D vitamin is the most active in the body, and the L form has almost no activity. So when you're taking DL alpha tocopherol, what you're actually getting is half of the dose that you think you're getting. Because the L form does really very little. Um, so if you're going to the good versions of alpha, vitamin E are just D, alpha tocopherol. Um, it's an antioxidant. So there's, there's something called the antioxidant cascade. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, the, uh, it's an antioxidant, and it's, it's usually found with fish oil. It goes in with oils, fish oil, um, other uh, unsaturated oils that help to keep the oil from growing right inside. Next slide. Um, there's a significant amount of research that's been done on the clinical effects of vitamin E supplementation. The research is all over the map. Most of it's not very good quality research. So it's at this point, we, we recommend the RDA of vitamin E, uh, which is sufficient to get the clinical effect of vitamin E, which is the antioxidant effect. Um, there's some studies that support the idea that if you take too much of it, it can actually increase your risk of certain diseases. Mostly, we think that those that research is flawed, but there's not a lot of good evidence either way. So at the moment, the best advice is if you're going to take it, take what the FDA considers the recommended daily allowance for it. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is what's called antioxidant regeneration. So. Vitamin E, vitamin C, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, CoQ10, which we'll also get to, and something called glutathione, which is the body's most powerful antioxidant that it makes. They all regenerate each other. So the idea is that when we have free radicals in our body, free radicals happen as a result of normal metabolism of food. That the antioxidant system has a very efficient way of getting rid of those free radicals. If it didn't, we all develop progeria at a very young age. We all rapidly, rapidly age because free radicals damage our cells' ability to reproduce. And we all die at the age of 10 or something from free radical damage to our cells. So our, our system, our bodies, have a very efficient way of getting rid of free radicals. This is sort of an overly complicated <coughs> diagram that explains that. Next slide, please. Um, vitamin K, yes? Vitamin E. Fish oil is vitamin E. Most fish oil supplements have vitamin E in it to keep the fish oil from growing bad. So the, the vitamin E that absorbs the free radicals that form in the fish oil keeps the fish oil fresh. Okay, vitamin K. Uh, vitamin K is involved with blood clotting. That's actually how it was named because in German, uh, it's, uh, vitamin K comes from the word coagulation. So, so vitamin K is involved with blood clotting. Most blood thinners actually specifically inhibit vitamin K. 
warfarin and Coumadin, they work by turning off the body's ability to use vitamin K. Um, the side effect of that is that you tend to develop osteoporosis because you need vitamin K along with D to put calcium in your bone. Um, there's three forms of vitamin K, two of them are naturally occurring, phyloquinone and menaquinone, and then there's the uh, artificial form menadione we recommend. I don't know if anybody even recommends that anymore because there's, there's, uh, that's K3, nobody really uses that anymore. If you're taking a blood thinner, you, you absolutely not take vitamin K unless your medical doctor prescribed the vitamin, but the blood thinner says you should. Uh, don't do that on your own. Next slide. Um, most people get enough vitamin K for blood clotting, for normal blood clotting function, from their uh, intestinal bacteria. And intestinal bacteria actually produce a wide range of different compounds. Vitamin K is one of them. Most people get enough for the blood clotting effect. But if you're trying to drive the, the calcium from your diet into your bones to increase your, your bones hardness uh, and, and structure, uh, you get in, the, the best evidence is for uh, a type of vitamin K called uh, MenaQ7, which is a form of vitamin K2. Um, it acts as a signaling molecule for the body that says put the calcium into bones, put it into bones. Um, and rather than taking the calcium out of bones and putting it into your artery walls, which is where it does not belong. Um, a particular form of MenaQ7, it's a little bit of an expensive supplement, but it's the most effective form for increasing bone mineral density, and um, there's, a, there's a lot of research that supports it. Um, and we, we actually do carry that in our office. Next slide, please. Uh, CoQ10, so this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. CoQ10 meets all of the requirements for the definition of a vitamin, but hasn't officially been recognized that way yet. Um, it's an extremely powerful antioxidant. Um, the uh, uh, CoQ10 is involved in your cell's production of energy. And CoQ10 is partially responsible for producing free radicals. It's also responsible for cleaning them up. Um, statin drugs like uh, Lipitor or Crestor um, stop your body from making CoQ10 <coughs> along with cholesterol because it's a cousin to cholesterol. And if you take those statin drugs without CoQ10, eventually you will develop the deficiency disease, which starts to lead to muscle pain, muscle weakness, and eventually heart failure because your heart is a muscle and uses the most amount of CoQ10 in your entire body. Uh, so it's really important to supplement CoQ10 along with statin drugs. Um, Next slide, please. Um, there's two different major forms that you'll encounter, ubiquinol and ubiquinone. Um, ubiquinol is the preferred form. It's about a third more active in the body than ubiquinone. Next slide, please. Okay, so water-soluble vitamins. So there's vitamin C and all of the B vitamins. These do not cause toxicity because for vitamin B, uh, any of the vitamin B's and vitamin C, whatever you don't use, you urinate out. So they don't build up to toxic levels. And there's a little bit of a discussion about maybe vitamin B6, but the, the research isn't super conclusive on that. Yes? Yeah, they say it's more important B6 than B12. Mm, no, no, no. We'll, 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 we'll get to all of the different B vitamins and you'll see what their role is in the world. So if you take um, well, all the B vitamins are different, they all have different functions, and if you're deficient in any of those individual vitamins, there are deficiency diseases that result from not having enough in your diet. Um, next slide, please. Let's first talk about vitamin C, because it's the easiest. Vitamin C is, every, most, most people are familiar with vitamin C, it's found in citrus, it's found in kiwis, it's found in kale. Um, the best the best source of vitamin C because of its uh, things that are found with it are from the foods in which it's found in it. And if you're going to supplement vitamin C, you should supplement from whole food sources that have those cofactors. Uh, bioflavonoids. Bioflavonoids are the compounds that give fruits and vegetables their color. So red pepper, like red bell peppers or orange or um, Swiss chard, or any of those, or any of those fruits and vegetables that have color to them, uh, have um, 
are our